The problem with most holiday cookies is that they either taste great, but they look a little rough, or they're beautiful and taste like cardboard. So obviously we set out to develop a recipe that both looked and tasted good, but we also wanted it to be easy because making holiday cookies is supposed to be fun, Dan. It is supposed to be fun. <laughs> so holiday cookies are all about tradition. Mm -hmm. We decided to question every ounce of tradition <laughs> when it comes to making them. Sounds like a good holiday party. We really wanted to kind of rework them and see if we could come up with the easiest cookie that baked up nice and flat on top with a really tender, crisp, interior. I'm in. All right, so let's start with our wet ingredients. I have an egg here, and I'm gonna add in a teaspoon of vanilla. Vanilla is a classic flavor for these. If it's missing, you would definitely tell. We've also got three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, and then just a quarter of a teaspoon of almond extract. Just a tiny amount. Tiny bit. If you use too much, it would overpower the cookie. Mm -hmm. It tastes like marzipan. But we found <laughs> a little bit actually kind of brings out the flavor and the complexity of the cookie. So I'm just gonna whisk this together. Okay, perfect, that's great. Move on to our dry ingredients. So we're starting with two and a half cups of all-purpose flour, and we're gonna add a little bit of leavener. So if you had a lot of leavener, mm -hmm. you get a really puffy, tall cookie, not what you want for holiday cookies that you're gonna decorate. Right. You want a nice, flat surface. That makes so we're sense. we're gonna add a quarter teaspoon each of baking powder and baking soda. And then I'm just gonna whisk this together. Okay, great. So we've got our wet and our dry. Now it's time to look at our sugar and our butter. Mm -hmm. So in most traditional cookie recipes, we'd be creaming this. We'd have a stand mixer out here. We'd have butter that we let sit at room temperature until it got to about 65 degrees, right? And that's so we can incorporate lots of air when we beat it together with the sugar. We're not gonna do that here. <laughs> totally out the window. Out the window. I'm gonna start with the sugar. And so we found when we made this recipe with just straight granulated sugar, that kind of a grainy texture to it. And the reason is there's not a lot of moisture in this cookie, right? No, there really we saw isn't. how much went into it. So there's not a lot of water to dissolve the sugar. Ah. We also tried with confectioner's sugar, which dissolved very easily, but it ends up making a really dense, hard cookie. We wanted something in the middle, and we found that super fine sugar, which you can buy at the supermarket, works great. Mm -hmm. You can also make it really easily in your food processor. So we've got a cup of granulated sugar. I'm gonna process this until it is powdery, which takes about 30 seconds. Okay, so that's 30 seconds. This is reduced to a nice powder, which is fantastic. So we're gonna go in with our butter, and it's nice and chilled, right out of the fridge. We're gonna do a technique called plasticizing, which you see when we make croissants, and we beat the butter and make it pliable, but mm -hmm. it's still really cold, and that's gonna help us with rolling it out, you'll see in a second. And that can happen in the food processor. It can, we can use the blades instead of, you know, kind of manual action. So this is 16 tablespoons of unsalted butter mm -hmm. cut into half inch pieces, and it's nice and chilled. So I'm just gonna process this for about 30 seconds until it's plasticized and incorporated into the sugar. And scrape down if you need to to make sure there's no sugar hiding out. Okay, that looks great. Next goes in our liquid ingredients. Yeah, this is totally backwards from making a traditional cookie. We're going crazy on this one. This is only 10 seconds. And now for our flour. And you can just add all the flour at once. I'll add it all at once. Okay, so we're gonna process this again, again for 30 seconds. We're looking for it to come together, no dry flour, but it's still gonna be a bit crumbly. Okay, that looks great. So let's pop over here. I'm just gonna dump this out on the board. Bring this together, really briefly needed, about 10 seconds here just to bring it all together. Boy, that looks like a nice dough to work with. It is, it's really nice. So, I mean, it's a tiny bit tacky, but it's really nice. So this is where the recipe really gets crazy. I'm gonna split this dough in half, and then normally at this point, softened butter would be so sticky. Yep. We try to roll it or anything like that. It's sticking to our rolling pin. It's a total mess. We're actually gonna start rolling this out now while Love it's still it. warm. Normally, take it out of the fridge. It's hard as a rock. Right. We're pounding it. We're gonna totally avoid that. So I'm gonna start you out on a piece of parchment here, and we're gonna start by using our hands. We're gonna try and get this down to a seven by nine inch oval. Okay. Just by hands, and then we'll do some more parchment and we'll roll the rest. Beautiful, All seven right. by nine. All right, yep. so now we're gonna take our second sheet of parchment, All right. and that goes on top. Just flatten that out. And now we're gonna switch over to our rolling pin. Mm -hmm. You can roll as you would with a rolling pin, but a really nice technique that we found is actually this pressing motion, where you start in the middle yeah. and you push out. So you can do a combination of the two. We're gonna look for a 10 by 14 inch oval here. Really, we're trying to get it down to an eighth of an inch thickness. Looks great. Yeah. All right, awesome. So we're gonna stack these up. So we're not gonna cut the cookies now. We're not. We're gonna chill before we cut, and that's gonna help us get really nice clean edges. Yeah. It's gonna be a lot easier to transfer them to the baking sheet. We're gonna put this in the fridge now until it's nice and chilled before we cut it. It'll take about an hour and a half. All right. 
So Dan mentioned that plasticized butter is the key to this recipe so that you can roll it out right away without chilling it. Now, what is plasticized butter? Well, a lot of the fat in cold butter is in the form of big crystals. When we pound cold butter with a rolling pin, or in our case, chop the butter up with the blades of a food processor, we break those large fat crystals into smaller crystals. And it's the smaller crystals that make the butter more malleable, so we're able to roll out that dough right away. So this has been an hour and a half, and it's nice and chilled. I'm going to give you your dough back. A couple cool tricks here. We're going to first peel off this top layer. All right. Which comes right off. And then we're going to put it back on. And OK. Ah, then we're going to flip it over. Then we're going to flip it over. I know this trick. You know this That's trick. so the dough doesn't stick to the bottom piece of parchment when you're cutting out the cookies. And then take this top one off, and we will get rid of this one. Now we're getting the real fun. We're going to make some shapes. Um, so I have a triangle and a square. Mm -hmm. I give you a star and a circle. Oh, yeah. Thought you would like those. So we're just going to cut them out and then um, transfer them over to our cookie sheets here. Okey -doke. This has really great airflow across the whole surface. We get really great results. So there is a reason for cookie sheets. There is. Yes, we don't use them very <laughs> much. But cookies, time to use them. We want to get as many as we can out of here. So the good news is you can definitely re-roll what's left. Oh, good. Yes, yeah, so we can re-roll it, flatten it back out, and then you just want to chill it again before you work with it. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Most of the decorating we're gonna do after the fact, but I really like the sugared cookies yeah. too, where you just get a nice covering. You wanna do that before you bake them. Okay. So basically, you wanna use a nice heavy hand and really cover the top. You can smooth it out if you have a big pile of anywhere. Don't worry about getting it on the sheet. Okay. It's, a, it's a pretty low oven and we're not gonna bake for that long, so it's not gonna burn or brown. All right, so just give it a nice thick coating. Yeah, that looks beautiful. All right. Beautiful. Okay, let's bake yours first. So okay. We're going to go into a 300 degree oven on the lower middle rack, and mm -hmm. we're going to bake them for 14 to 17 minutes, rotating halfway through. They're going to get just lightly browned on top. We don't want them to get really dark. Ooh. Oh, I love that smell. So buttery. They look beautiful. So Thank these are going to rest for five minutes like this, then we'll get them off the sheet. In the meantime, we're going to bake off the second batch. All right. So we have some beautiful cooled cookies here. Mm -hmm. We can eat the sugar ones right now, but these other ones are looking a little plain. So I think we want to decorate them. Fun. And for that, we need a royal icing. So this is the traditional topping for these cookies. It dries to this gorgeous kind of matte finish. And we're not breaking from tradition at all for this. We're going really, really classic. So I've got two and two thirds cups of confectioner sugar in the bowl here. And I have two large egg whites, half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and eighth of a teaspoon salt. So it's really clean flavor. Mm -hmm. It's really about that sweetness and, and the beauty of it. Just a little vanilla. Just a little bit. We're going to start this on medium low so we don't kick confectioner sugar <laughs> all over the kitchen. And it'll just come together in about a minute. So now that that's come together, we're going to turn it to medium high. And we're going to whip until we get nice, soft peaks. OK, so that's been three minutes. And we'll take a look. Nice, soft peaks there. All right, we're good. Now, if you are worried about using raw eggs in this frosting, you could substitute pasteurized egg whites. I'm going to set aside a half a cup now. We're going to use it for a really cool technique called flooding Ooh. in a second here. So it's going to transfer about a half a cup to this measuring cup here. All right. I'm going to do the transfer here. Mm -hmm. There you go. Nicely done. Now, before we get into piping, I just want to show you this cool technique. So we've got the half a cup of reserved icing, mm -hmm. and then this is one teaspoon of milk. Just a little. It's going to thin it out just enough that we can fill on the inside of the cookies and get those beautiful, mm. like, flat finish. Yeah, it's almost like a mirror finish. Exactly. Beautiful. All right. All right. So we're squeezing all this gorgeous icing to the tip. Yep, exactly. Squeeze it down. And then twist it. So I'm going to pipe a little border for my, my squares here so that I can flood them. OK, so I piped my border there. And now I'm just going to take a little spoon of my flooding liquid here, go right in the middle. And then I'm using a toothpick, spreading it to the edges. So just take it right out to the edge. So for the flooded ones, you want to let the first level dry completely mm -hmm. before you pipe over the top. OK, so now we're going to get really fancy here. So <laughs> I've got these beautiful dragees. Mm, they're like a, pearls. Yeah, they're, aren't they gorgeous? You can get them in all different colors. And I'm um, using some tweezers here. <laughs> yes, you are. Because I, there's no way my fingers would make this work. That's what's great about these cookies. I feel like you can make them as easy, mm -hmm. sugar top, or as fancy as you want them. It's really up to you. Love it. OK, so we'll finish decorating the rest of these. Mm -hmm. And then they just need to dry for another hour and a half. And then we're ready to eat. OK.
Well, Dan, these look really bad. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible, right? They are gorgeous. They weren't fun to make. They don't look good. <laughs> they're not going to taste good. No, they're, they're absolutely beautiful. And so I just want to show you before we dig in and eat. So this is the one that I flooded. It is beautiful. Let it dry, and then you just go over the top. And oh. you can design on top, but it, you get this nice height to it. You going to eat that one? Yeah. Mmm. <laughs> Tastes oh, buttery good. and light. Has a little bit of good chew in the middle, but it's crisp on the outside. That's so good. What I love is the cookie. Obviously, it has great structure because it's nice and flat and mm -hmm. it has good edges, but it still eats really, really mm -hmm. nice, right? It's tender, crisp. It's it's perfect. Dan, these are delicious cookies. Well done. Thank you. That was fun. That was fun. So for perfect holiday cookies that taste good, look good, and are easy to make, start by processing the sugar until finely ground, then add chilled butter and plasticize it. Then add the egg along with some vanilla and almond extract before adding the flour. Roll the dough out while it's still soft, then chill it until firm before cutting out the cookies. After baking the cookies, let them cool completely before having fun with all sorts of cookie decorations. So from America's Test Kitchen, our new recipe for easy holiday sugar cookies. I'm gonna go in for this guy next. You need a round one. Uh huh. <laughs> Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.